Hello, and welcome to The Fit Show. I'm Hannah Gordon, bringing you another update in the world of bodybuilding and fitness. On this week's show, we go back to San Diego, where we'll have more leg training with IFBB professionals, Garrett Downing and Derek Farnsworth. As well as, we'll go back to the kitchen for more pre-contest nutrition with NPC competitor, Jerome Ferguson. But first, let's head back to San Diego. Welcome back to The Fix Show. We're get, uh, beginning with our second part of our leg workout. We're gonna be doing a combination of two exercises here. One's gonna be the Smith squat. Derek and I will be front squatting, and Pete and Joe will be doing the traditional back squat. The only difference in this exercise is, for some of us, uh, stability is an issue, so for, ones that, for us that have stability issues, we're gonna be doing front squat. Derek will do front squat fairly light, not compared to what he usually can do, but just for maintenance work, because he's got such a huge sweep, he really doesn't need to pound that exercise with a lot of heavy weight, so tune in, we're getting ready to roll. All right, Joe's up next. To give you a little background on this guy, I call him the 40 year, 40 hour man. Um, he's got a regular job, he's got two kids. He has one hour a day to train. That's like his only time. So, you know, he isn't a baby who can't make his meals. He travels a lot and, you know, he's five weeks off from a show and he puts it together. So those guys would say you can't do shows with a 40 hour job is full. You know, you're looking at a guy who can do it. You know, two kids and he never misses, you know, he'll be going to Disneyland today after this, you know. So he's not one of these guys who does legs and goes home for the next five hours and takes a nap. So I really admire Joe as far as, you know, one of my clients that in the last two years, this guy couldn't squat 135 with stability. You know, you'll see him today do 20s. What Joe's gonna do right now is, you'll see his stance is pretty narrow. Reason being is we're gonna have him on a Smith machine so, so balance won't be a, a factor. So moving his feet in will give him a lot more sweep. So we're gonna see that right here. So Joe's gonna go about 15, 20 reps, nice deep range. Give a little thing, you're gonna see he's a little unstable still. He's still fighting balance. It's, you know, it's a challenging thing. His core muscles aren't as strong as they should be, so we're working him and working him. That's why we're using the Smith machine today. All right, Joe, let's kick it. Let's go, Joe. A little backwards, a little back. There you go. Open up if you need to go. The bar goes backwards, don't forget. All right, Joe, right up. You'll see him not stop. That's my style. I never lock out. Puts pressure on the knees too much. Up and down, come on Joe, up and down, deep, good, Four. good, up and down, head up, look good, nice, you can see, never stopping, just like a piston, kind of call it piston squats because you're just not moving, nice, up and down, breathe, don't hold that breath in, breathe out, finish it, five left, four, come on, three, two, one, Dig, chest up, nice, good set, good set. All right, you see Garrett's up, he's gonna front squat. I'm gonna have Pete spot him so I can kind of talk about it a little bit. Garrett's going to front squat, it's kind of new for him. Um, he actually is better front squatting than he is rear squatting, so we're getting him used to the Smith machine, then we're gonna transfer him over to free weight front, so um, be a little more stability muscles built. But um, as you can see, his form is a lot better. This way he's flat footed on his usual. I think in a year you're going to see a huge change in his legs from this reason alone. Nice and straight, just below parallel. Good form, real good form. Finish it, Garrett. Five more, right? Come on. Up. Nice. Two left. Nice. Good. Good set. Good set. Okay, Derek's up for his set. You know, he's not messing around. He's doing a little bit lighter weight compared to what he can do. I've seen him do 405 and 465 on a free weight, but here he's just doing, you know, 295 here. And he's gonna rep out here just for maintenance purposes here. We got Pete Ciccone here spotting him here in case he needs a little push. Come on, D. Good. Come on. Drive, come on. Good. Oh. That was a great set, great set for D. Pete's up now doing his set. He's added a little weight. He's up to 225 and he's gonna start doing his back squat here. We got Derek Farnsworth, IFBB Pro. He's gonna be spotting him. Come on, Pete, set it up. Pete's gonna bang out 20 reps here. Derek's here just for safety purposes. Halfway. Two, nice. 
Nice, non-stop, there you go. That's Good, nice. come up. Come on. Good. Come on, Pete. Two left. Last one. Come on. Up. Come up. Good. Joe Gold's back up doing his, his next set. And one thing I want to emphasize is that, you know, uh, Joe's kind of kind of like a, um, he's a broad range individual. Joe works full time, trains for a show, has a wife, has a family. So he's a family man. Come on, Joe. Strong worth ethic. Strong worth ethic here. Come on, Joe. Come on. One thing I want to emphasize when you're training with people, you don't necessarily need to train with uh, someone that's bigger than you. What you want to do is train with someone that has the intensity. Notice Joe. Joe's not the biggest guy, but Joe has the intensity of any 250-pound bodybuilder I've ever seen. Derek, what's this I hear about you calling people out when they train legs? You've challenged Sean. You've challenged Melvin. Are these guys ducking you? No, well, Sean's having a baby now, so I understand that. Yeah, Sean's got to get old, and, that. you know, I respect that. But, you know, Melvin's a young dog, so I'm trying to wait for him to come down to San Diego and have some fun with us, you know. So you kind of know him well. Yeah, I know, you know him. Melvin, Melvin out there. dog, you know, we go way back, back to the NPC years. I'm not trying to instigate this dog, but you know, you got this midget here calling you out. I'm not midget, I suggest you come down here to San Diego, feel the love, or I'll transport him in a duffel bag up to you <laughs> so you can beat the snot out of him. Either way, you, you know, know me, dog. I'm not instigating it, but you know, Derek wants a piece of you, so you got to step up. Melvin, come on down. You got the Olympia coming. We'll get you a pair of legs for you come October. And speaking of stepping up, I'm going to get ready and do my next set, try to step up here. I'm not gonna add any weight, but I'm sure Derek may yeah. wanna slide a plate on, but we'll see what happens. A little narrow. Nice set, come on. I don't mean to diss Melvin, but you know. I love his physique. Give him a pair of legs, I think he can be a lippy, uh, contender big time, so it's more of an invitation to Melvin rather than a challenge. Come on. Five more. Come on. Come on, you got it. Dig for it. Show to, Melvin what it's like. You're trying to hurt a brother. No, I'm trying to make Melvin scared a little bit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Derek's upped it a little bit. He's added some additional weight here. Watch how he makes this look so easy. He makes this look so easy. That's the hardest part right there. It's like cutting butter. Come on. Come on, D. This was the last one's for Melvin. Come on, D. Back it. Pete's gonna go up. Uh, I know right now his back's a little achy. He's just talking to us, so Pete's, Garrett's gonna give him a big tight spot. I mean, it comes with the territory of squatting week after week. You do get injuries, so, you know, he may be a wimp for being on the Smith machine, but I'd rather be safe with the guys and hurt him. I've known Pete for over 15 years back in Massachusetts. I've actually trained him off and on for 12 years. So it's kind of interesting. We trained for three or four years. We meet back up out here, and it's, it's like we were when we were 20 years old. So I remember this kid when I first started with him. Puked for a whole year. Every workout, this kid would get sick and come back. End of the year, he put two inches on his legs. So, you know, he may not be national champion or that, but... You know, he's got two inches on his legs, and he's probably trained harder than half the pros you see out there. He got more heart, so I train anybody who has heart like this rather than genetics. Come on, Pete, right up. Nice. You see, Garrett, this is the thing about Garrett I have to deal with. I always got to, like, take these off and put on the man weight, see? 
That's the difference for a good training partner, you know. I don't let them wimp out. Let's go, man. You gonna give us a good spot? Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, D, I'll make a deal with you. I do Tim at this. See the deal he's trying to deal with? I mean. It's always compromise. Wheeling and dealing. Come on, get on there and go. Yeah. And you pull. I'll pull, pull, that's all right. And I'll do whatever yeah, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, come on, let's go. Good feet stance. Make sure they're balanced like you had. Don't get that imbalance in your hip. See, there's always compromise in training. training. All the way up. Up. Five. Up higher. Six. All the way up. Seven. All the way up. Eight. All the way up. Nine. All the way up. Ten. Keep going. I got it. Five more. Come on. One. Two. Three. Four. There it is. Good. Nice set. Derek's on his last set here. He's going to do a 405 on the Smith front squat here. Pete Ciccones will be spotting him. Buddy Joe will be pulling. Derek will let us know when he wants to get a pull. He'll probably pull it around 8 to 10 reps. Come on, D. Come on. Show these folks, you know what? You don't necessarily have to be in Venice to train hard. Plenty of guys train really hard world in San Diego. Come on, D. Come on. Come on. Wrap. Come on, D. Good. It's not always about the weight. What we're doing, we're pulling weight, allowing them to bump up the intensity, allowing them to get more reps out. Good. That's a good set, D. Whew, how about it? That was a good workout, wasn't it, guys? Yeah. Really good. Everyone's out of breath here. To go. Well, we've just completed our second exercise in our leg chest from here on Saturday morning at World Gym San Diego. Tune in for the next episode of The Fit Show when we begin our next portion of our exercise with hack squats. <laughs> now that we're done with legs, let's head back to the kitchen for more pre-contest nutrition with NPC competitor Jerome Hollywood Ferguson. What's up? You ready to get this party started? Once again, I want to welcome you guys cooking in the kitchen with Jay Hollywood. Hi, my name is Jerome. Um, today, we're going to um, do a pre-contest meal. And uh, the pre-contest meal we're going to do today, we would call it uh, probably the second meal. Uh, when you get ready for a show, you really don't have Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You basically have uh, your one, two, three, four, five, six meals. And uh, sometimes it can be so much food that you may try to be eight meals. So, but today we're going to do my favorite uh, beef. And um, I really don't care too much for, the, for a regular steak. I like tri tip. And um, uh, the reason I like tri tip is because. When you eat dotting, I, I, well, I guess I don't want to use the word, preparing for a show, and if you 10 to 12 weeks out of, out of you know, from the show and you're preparing for it, when you actually eat too much um, chicken, too much protein, too much chicken, too much beef, believe it or not, your mouth gets sore. So I like uh, this type beef, which is a tri-tip. Uh, because the texture of it is easy on my mouth because I have to eat so much of it, okay? So, today, we're gonna prepare tri-tips uh, for our second meal and potatoes. Yeah, I know I can seem kind of simple, but uh, that's pre-contest time. And we're gonna say we're a week out from the show. So a week out from the show, we will do this. Now, the tri-tip, it looks fatty. I know everybody out there is like, God, man, you got all that fat on that? On the, and on the piece of beef, it's really fatty. But what, what I do is, I would cook, cook it, and when I'm done cooking it, when I really prepare it to eat it, I would cut the fat off. And I would just eat around the fat, okay? So, here we go. Now, this beautiful clay cookware here is the bomb. 
you know, because you cookware is very important. If you got bad cookware, it, you can mess a meal up. And when you, when you pre-contest, you know, you that close to the show, every meal counts because you weigh food out. I mean, everything is like science, you know. So for all you guys out there, get your good cookware. I get mine at the Pepper Shelf. You guys should try it out. It's online, you know, look it up. But uh, you got to have really good cookware, okay? So this is it, the way we're going to prepare it today. All I use is, oops, I almost forget something. Always clean your beef. <laughs> really kind of wash it off. <laughs> so you want to wash your beef off. And um, here we go. Prepare it. And really, I really, I don't, I'm not going to recommend you guys to eat beef. The only reason, the only time I really eat a lot of beef is when I'm getting ready for a show. Because for a bodybuilder, the beef keeps you full. Oh, what well, I should say myself. Keeps you full, meaning is it, 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 it makes your muscle, keeps your muscle full. And uh, it, it has a little bit more taste to it rather than plain chicken or fish, which I do eat chicken and fish too. But um, I don't really recommend you guys to go out and eat um, beef, uh, you know, every day of the week. You know, you can have beef maybe once a week or something. Uh, I, I really recommend to eat um, fish or chicken because this really helps you break, break, I mean, it, it just, I don't know, it's weird, it's like, it's kind of your digestive system. You know, because um, beef, any kind of beef kind of gets stuck in your system. But um, chicken, fish, you know, ground turkey or something, it's kind of more lighter. So when you're trying to come down, you want to eat, you know, for an average person, you want to eat food that's lighter, cleaner. I, mean, I can't, I don't want to say cleaner, but lighter. And it's easier for you to process. Okay? So... Um, but today we're doing beef for me and uh, spread it out, boom, bang, a little virginal um, olive oil, extra virgin it is. And what I do, I just put a little on top, like so. There you go, get my oven going there. I put a, put a little um, oil on top. Perfect. And uh, since I'm a week out, guys, we're gonna we're gonna we, this meal is prepared for being a week out. A week out, I couldn't put anything on it. Only thing I put on it is once again my favorite red pepper, and I just sprinkle enough on it. And now you can use Mrs. Dash. You know, different kind of flavor for Mrs. Dash. It's really good. But for for some reason, excuse me. I can't really get a taste out of the Mrs. Dash. And I don't know, maybe it's me. But uh, I just get a little bit more out of my pepper. I mean, you know, it's, it's showtime anyway, so mentally you're in that zone anyway, so you're just getting the pepper. You know, you, it's not like you're eating everything for taste. You know, so that's why I like to just use pepper. You know, so here we go with this. Bang. That's the way you kind of bake the pad. Very simple. And uh, the thing about it, when you just, you, all these different, the meals that you kind of read about or the meal I'm showing you, you want to add it to your life and just make it a way of life. You know, and it's make sure you always eat. And it's all about loving your body. You love your body, you feed your body. So just make sure you eat and love yourself. You want to try to cook the meat at least uh, probably like 30 minutes because it depends on the texture you like. If you want a little red, you can do it for 20 minutes after you have the oven preheated. And me, I kind of like to leave it a little red. Reason why is when you cook so much of it because um, being a bodybuilder, you had to eat so much food, so you're basically cooking in bulk that you have to reheat it, you know. And uh, I don't like to use the microwave to reheat. I like to use the oven to reheat. And so if you leave, when you cook it, the first time you leave it a little pink, when you reheat it, it still tastes good and it's not chewy. So I recommend you basically to reheat it, uh, to, to, when you cook it, to make sure that, you know, 20 to 40 minutes, 
but make sure it's a little red, pink. And then when you reheat it, you could actually, it's still not chewy, you still got a good texture when, you, when you're eating, it still really tastes good, okay? So, that's it. Now, as you see, fat is still on it, okay? Um, and what I would actually do, I would actually cut around it, and then, I'm, and cut all the fat out of it, okay? But before, there, before then, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do our potatoes, okay? So, pre-contest, you cut the potatoes down, you, I mean, you cut your carbs down because you're a week out from the show. Normally, I can eat up to 15 ounces of potatoes. Today, I would have to eat probably seven ounces of potatoes, okay? Because we're weak out, when you're weak out, you start dropping your sodium and you start dropping your carbs. Okay, your protein base stay the same because you actually eat enough. But that you drop. Okay, so we want to we want to try to weigh out at least seven ounces of potatoes. I prefer red potatoes. Bang! Oops, nope, that didn't work. That was eight. Okay, let me figure this out. And there we go. Seven ounces. Okay. Yes, your food is measured. Okay. So we'll take the seven ounce potatoes and um, you know being today in today's world we all are very busy. We got more than enough we can handle. Really don't have time to boil the potato. Okay. So me, yes I do use the microwave. I'll poke a hole in my potatoes to let me out. Okay. I wrap my potato up in a paper towel like so, because I'm in a hurry, I'm always in a hurry, tape, tape in a paper towel, and then I would put it in the microwave, and I would only cook it, because with five, with uh, seven ounces of potatoes, you can use your microwave potato, push it once, and when it's done, then your potato is ready. Now, if you go up to 10 ounces to 15 ounces, you may need to push the potato for twice, which I think called like three minutes per, per potato. Okay, so as we wait on the potatoes, I'm gonna show you how I prepare my meal for my steak. Okay, what I what I do, I always uh, have the the steak already pre um, measured the weight. My diet pre contest requires me to have 10 ounces of steak. So, what I do, I'm always in a hurry, I know what 10 ounces of steak weigh when it's not cooked. Uncooked 10 ounce steak, and when it's cooked, a 10 ounce steak weighs a little over eight ounces, okay? So, what I would do, I would cut me eight ounces of steak, okay? So here we go. Bang. And see that fatty part? You basically cut the fatty part off. Always get rid of the fat. And once again, guys, I don't recommend you guys eat beef. I recommend you guys eat fish. I recommend you guys eat chicken. You know? And uh, once again, the reason we eat beef, because it keeps, for me, rather, it keeps you full. And I don't want you guys to look at it like it's a diet. It's really not a diet. You know, it's just, uh, you know, it's just make it a way of life because it's all about feeling good. It's all about looking good. And when you eat right, you feel good. And when you feel good, you look good. It ain't about eating food, feel good food. It's about eating food to make you feel good, not feel good food. Because feel good food may make you feel good at the moment, but afterwards, we all know you feel really bad. Okay, so I just keep it going. There we go. There we go. And remember, safety is first in the kitchen. <laughs> exactly right, baby. Mm. Ready to get this party started. Here we go. Once again, we're going to wait out. 
I like to cut my food up. I'm not like, it's weird, it's like, when you eat as much as I do, you try to make it easy and simple as possible. You see how pink it is? Because I'm gonna reheat it, when I reheat it, the next time I eat it, it'll still have a little pink to it. Okay, so here we go. We're trying to get us eight ounces. See what, see right here, these pieces don't have any fat in them. And the pieces that do have fat in them, you want to cut it off, like so, like so. So there we go with that. Get rid of fat. As you can see, you do cut the fat off. So, you got your beef ready. And when you, as you're preparing your beef, because you got to have a nice system, okay? As you're preparing your beef, You'll be waiting on your potatoes. There you go. Got your beef going. Oh, there you go. About time you get through cutting your cutting your, your beef up, your potatoes are ready. There you go. And you want to kind of make it like look pretty. You know how we kind of like our food to kind of look pretty. You know. Some of us want to eat food that don't look so good. I'm this type of person. I kind of like <laughs> to, <laughs> to make it look kind of good. Okay. There your beef right there. Okay. Now. We're going to bring out the potatoes. Up, oh, did perfect, did really good. Here we go. And you got your potatoes. Normally, I like, I don't like one big potato. I don't know why. I prefer the, the red one because I guess when you eat so much food, you just don't want to look at it like you eat a lot of food. It's like, man, that's a big old potato. I said, man, look at those cute little potatoes. See, there you go. So. For you guys out there, just look at, don't look at this as a pre-contest diet. Look at this as a, I call this my pre-contest meal. But what you could do, you can take this, what I'm teaching you today, and apply it to your life. And I guarantee you would lose weight just by changing your meals up. And uh, you can also, if you want, I also use zero sodium salt and sprinkle a salt on it, you know, right there. And there you go. So everybody out there, we love you. We love you, the Fit Show love you. Thank you, thank my sponsor for making me to be able to sit here and eat all this good food that they pay for. We love you, Zions. We love you, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I want to thank the Fit Show for letting me be a part of it. And once again, love yourself. Take what I'm showing you, apply it into your life. Don't beat yourself up. Don't starve yourself. Eat your meals. Okay? Mwah. We love you. The Fit Show love you, baby. <laughs> See you later. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Fit Show. Be sure to tune in next week for another update in the world of bodybuilding and fitness. I'm Hannah Gordon. Thanks for watching.